I would now like to introduce our keynote speaker, Marie Alexandra Kurt. She is a graduate economist and studied at Trier University and did postgraduate studies at Humboldt University in Berlin. For many, many years, she has worked for GIZ, the Society for International Cooperation, and she was also an advisor and consultant for small cities and bigger cities in these countries. She dealt with sustainable sustainable management of natural resources, and as well as climate change. Here she was also active in Ukraine, Guatemala, and other countries. Since 2014, she's been active for City Alliance, a global network with the aim of fighting poverty, reducing poverty, and particularly sustainable development of cities. She is the task manager for the program in Ghana, and what is of uh, great interest for us for the work program, Global Sustainability Agenda. So she is very familiar with the Agenda 2030 and the new Urban Agenda, which was adopted last year, so two framework programs by the UN. So she will highlight these two agendas, have a look at some cities, and will give us the international perspective. I'm looking forward to your speech. Good morning. Many thanks for your kind words of introduction, and thank you very much for the invitation. We are very happy that we can take part in this. We, the Alliance, are very grateful that you have made your way to this location. We know there's a lot of competition at the COP. My name is Alexandra Kurt. I work at City Alliance. And I apologize if I'm not that fluent, because normally I give presentations in English, so I now try to um, switch back to German, because I think this is useful for today's discussion. City Alliance is a global partnership. We have got a secretariat located in Brussels. We have 34 different members from different constituencies. We have national governments, but also city alliances such as ICLE or UCAG. Uh, governments of Chile, Ghana, Sweden, France, UN Habitat, multilateral, UDP, civil society organizations, and universities that are also members of City Alliance. It's important to know that we, the members have come together since 1990 with one aim to reduce poverty in cities. How can we promote inclusive, integrative development of cities for particularly special groups of population? In general, we concentrate on Africa, strong focus on Africa, because the biggest urbanization rates and the growth of cities is in uh, takes place in Africa, then Asia, then followed by Latin America, but not in Europe. But this may change again in the coming years. Well, we also were given figures already concerning urbanization. Currently, 3.9 billion people do live in cities by 2030. If we want to fulfill the global agenda, they will account for 5 billion people. So just a few figures we have highlighted this morning. We see that urbanization and the development of cities is one of the major challenges of the 21st century. This morning, we also saw that the agenda 2030, as so in the past two years, it's a very comprehensive agenda that has been adopted, including sustainable development goals. And I would highlight in this context that developing countries for the global south and the north are taken into account and not the MDGs that is only referring to the global south only on developing countries. So the focus has changed. We have 17 goals with 169 targets, and they give a clear framework for action with a clear focus on the major cities and the data to fulfill the global agendas. So in addition, we have got the new urban agenda, which was adopted in Quito last year. And this gives some kind of guideline as to how sustainable city development will look like in the coming 20 years. We also saw that we have one special goal, that's SDG 11, so integrated city development. And we can here see that there's no doubt that this has particular cloud with a view to urbanization and sustainable development. If we don't focus on cities and develop them, 
we won't achieve any kind of sustainable development. But we see here an interesting transfer of discussion. We no longer talk about urbanization alone, but we also concentrate on the city as a place where more people live together, work, and consume. Well, looking back from a historical point of view, flows into cities had to do with workplaces, social integration, labor force. Cities have always been the centers of economic opportunities, occupation opportunities, places where different faiths, cultures and innovations are brought about, but cities are also under pressure from climate change, environmental degradation, and destruction, economic crisis, economic and political insecurity. All this influences cities, which of course has an influence on the growth of cities. We also saw that the Paris Agreement aiming at reducing the temperature increase or limited to uh, two degrees in the coming few years. And in the Paris Agreement, well, there's enshrined a big success for the urban community and to see that there are a number of obligations to fight climate change are included. And they refer to the cities and their key role to um, tackle climate change. There are the SDGs, the Paris Agreement, and there are other global agreements, Sendai, Alis Ababa. All they concentrate very much on the role of towns and cities and how important it is to promote and to help cities to fulfill the global agenda. Well, these global agendas are very topical. In the coming five to 20 years, the measures taken will determine whether the cities will bring about a transformation of a just emission economic model can be brought about. After having the global agendas now, the question arises as to how the global agendas will be implemented, who takes on responsibilities, what will be the first few measures, and also to keep an eye on who will do the review. Who is responsible for reporting, for monitoring, to know whether we are on the right path of implementation? This makes or highlights again the urgency, the demand for institutional catalysts in order to deal with national and supranational governments and civic sectors to support them to find new ways of cooperation. It has been recognized, yes, but it's still a difficulty to uh, deal with it. And the City Alliance asked the question as to how the partnership between the different players can be supported and promoted by bringing about new development models and to lead to sustainable development of cities. Now I would like to focus on Africa, as I said at the beginning. Our great focus and at Cities Alliance is Africa. Almost all of the growth in cities and urban centers will take place, 90% will take place in Africa and Asia. Six out of 10 city dwellers in Africa live in slums, so the informal sector. So the extreme poverty conditions, no access to water, to garbage removal, to education. So extreme poverty conditions, six out of 10 city dwellers live in slums. So 880 million people living in such informal quarters, roughly 11 times the size of Germany. And the figures are still on the increase. 60% of the population in Africa is aged below 25, so there will soon be high pressure on the development of cities in Africa, but this will also lead to migration. Young people looking for opportunities, job opportunities, looking for future developments, looking for education. And if we include this kind of growth pattern and look at the industrialization that is looming on the uh, horizon in Africa, this will lead to rising emissions in Africa, although this is a region causing least of the emissions now, this will change in the coming few years. It's also interesting to see that the cities, well, if you look at Africa, 50% of the cities have between 1 million and 5 million um, inhabitants are located near the coast, in the coastal areas, and they are also prone and to suffer from the sea level rise. So extreme trends in Africa lying ahead 
of us in the next 10 or 20 years. And of course, these trends will have serious changes with a view to spatial planning, economic activities, social structures, and governance. Let me enumerate a number of examples, two to three examples from countries where we are active as Cities Alliance together with our partnerships. Liberia, Uganda, and Ghana. So in this respect, we have to emphasize that Cities Alliance, as I said before, tries to promote partnerships, cooperation in partnership in the respective countries. So to underline the importance of local governments and national governments, and also to deal with civil society and work together with universities as well. Currently, we are present in eight countries are active there to have a commitment ranging from 5 to 20 years. Fewer countries, but a longer period of commitment, because urbanization and transformation will not be done in the next two to three years, but will rather have a kind of you know, span a period of 20 years. And here Cities Alliance also has a number of bilateral projects, including also some measures ranging for two to three or four years. In Liberia, Monrovia, Western Africa, it's one of the most underdeveloped cities in the world, characterized by long-term conflicts and the past few years it has been haunted by the Ebola crisis. A lot of you may have watched it on TV in the news. So this reflects the extreme version of African urbanization. Very few provision of commodities and energy and land was uh, occupied by, uh, captured by private people or elites, which resulted in extremely poor living conditions for the urban poor. So Cities Alliance uh, advocates three important changes of direction. So we want to empower slum uh, dwellers and recognizing poverty as a driving force. Just think about a lot of African cities, up to 60 or 80 percent are informal settlements, dilapidated areas, no access to communication, no access to local government, uh, let alone the national governments. How can local government recognize as to who lives in these slums? What are their conditions or what are their needs? A new relationship was made between informal traders and public authorities. Most African countries and their economic growth based on the informal sector. And we have to see that these are the economic engines for city development. And Cities Alliance um, supported the aspects of kind of slum upgrading and an affordable housing framework. How can climate suitable housing be made available for the poorer people? So by working with certain prototypes and also with new kinds of funding. Uganda now, very close to Liberia and Monrovia, is historically one of the most rural countries in Africa, but with rapidly growing cities. They have an urbanization rate of 3 to 6 percent altogether, and they are now exposed to this to migration and internal population growth, and Cities Alliance has set itself the aim that to work together with those cities, uh, with the 14 secondary cities. Uh, we want to give them parallel support both for civil society but also for local authorities and the local government. So we established local development fora, which in Europe and parts of Latin America does exist already, but where kind of exchange is promoted between local government, civil society, the private sector, universities, the Chamber of Commerce, so different stakeholders in the urban environment coming together, and these municipal fora were also legally rooted, and they are the entry point in order to do local investments and to decide on local investments with a view to what the most important measures should be. Ghana, I've worked there quite some time. It's a very interesting process we can observe. And in parallel, well, this applies for Indonesia as well as Chile. Those countries who do have a special or pursue a special urban development policy that four or five years ago had exceeded the urbanization rate of 50 percent 
these countries started to develop an urban development policy and to have an urban development and uh, an urban discussion on this, and also related to the national government and how secondary cities can be promoted. Ghana set itself the goal to uh, have a closer look and to kind of x-ray its kind of development policy and how it goes hand in hand with the SDGs and the Paris Agreement and also to then to have a kind of updated national policy. A lot of countries try to understand these urban developments and to apply some of this to their national context, but they have to follow the clear guideline saying we can't implement this in a one-to-one -one ratio because the capacities at the local level do not do justice to it and we do not have sufficient capacities to deal with 176 indicators and to implement them. Well, this is a subject that must be taken into account and both national governments and local authorities are exposed to these challenges when global agendas are to be implemented. Let me take a special aspect I would now like to highlight and Torsten mentioned it. Global agenda, how important are cities for the global implementation of agendas? This has officially been recognized and the connection between cities and a sustainable, resilient planet, this is increasingly accepted, but we need more scientifically proven facts we have to include and I would like to join in for the City Alliance also takes part in the scientific conference, the IPCC for cities and climate uh, change taking place next March in Edmonton, where we bring together scientific findings and discuss them, anything that's related to uh, climate change and so on. Future Earth and Cities Alliance are some of the organizations supporting this event. Three more aspects I would like to highlight. Cities Alliance works um, and has a main mandate uh, to deal with this and we are very happy about um, the fact that people increasing and governments recognize cities in their important role for the implementation of global agendas. It's important shift to see that cities have become global players. It's not enough to have an exchange between cities only or among cities, but also to see to it that there is the connections between civil society, national government, the global level, as well as the universities and other stakeholders. So cities have become important global players. And against the background, uh, this background, I have to say that 60% of the uh, sub goals or targets cannot be achieved if they don't have enough capacities. So hence it's important that the national governments accept the necessity to give um, more mandate and more resources to the local level. Perhaps in the European context this isn't really the case and, and, or not necessary, but in Latin America and Africa here this has major political implications. But this renders uh, difficult for the city to be to take action. It's important to promote human capital in the cities. We did a study in Africa where we found out that cities with one third of the human resources and capacities try to implement their mandates. One third. All in all, this means there is one planner, one or another person responsible for engineering, but it's the, the human capacities at the local level is much too small in order to cope with all the major challenges. And linked to this, we have to ask who at the local level is uh, has which kind of development background. And last but not least, we need to take a broader look at national urban policies, a discussion that is promoted in Africa as well as in Latin America, to see the importance of a national policy in order to integrate the urban centers and also to cope with the challenges and channel the challenges of urbanization and to profit from them. Thank you.